All right, good morning, y'all. Uh, we are live this morning. Um, should be everything should be working all right, but uh, I'll be able to see should be able to see your comments for when you join. Uh, so just let me know. Uh, just let me know if you can hear me. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, let me know that uh, you are watching. Um, uh, as it says in the title of the video, my assistant and I, Apollo, are here on our back porch. Uh, here at the house um, we're looking forward to just giving you a brief word uh, obviously at this point this has been a, kind of a whirlwind of a week for all of us it's been uh, a little bit unexpected um, because uh, many of us were expecting to be able to worship again this week but uh, if you hadn't seen the video I assume if you're watching you have seen the video uh, we had to make a last-minute change of plans just because of the growing number of coronaviruses that uh, coronavirus cases that are taking place here uh, in South Carolina. And so um, so it looks like uh, everybody is able to get on. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, let me know uh, in the comments below if you can hear me. Um, it is good to see all of you. Uh, I've mentioned this before, uh, as I've talked with the other staff, when we do these Facebook Live videos, we haven't done them very often, but when we do, it's good to know that we're actually not just talking to uh, a camera, like what we do normally, we record and we do all of that, but to know that we are talking to uh, people who are actually watching and uh, tuning in with us uh, during this time. And so uh, it's good to see you. It's good to see uh, all of you. I'm seeing a couple of things. Let me... There we go. All right, now I can actually see the comments. Uh, so, good morning, Dolly. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Ann. Uh, good morning, Chuck. Good morning, Lynette. Uh, Anthony, Myra, Randy, Reba. Uh, it's it's good to see all of you. Good morning, Cheryl. Um, so, good deal. All right. So, it, it seems like y'all can hear me uh, and that y'all are able to watch me. And so. Uh, let's go ahead and join uh, in a word of prayer. Gracious God, we are so thankful for the many blessings that you have given us. And even in the midst of this time where, uh, where things seem to change on a daily basis, uh, we know that you still stay true to who you are. And so, Lord, uh, during this uncertain time, even though that we are... Uh, all over the place here uh, worshiping you today we ask that you will unite us by your spirit and draw us close to you this day and we ask this in the name of the father son and holy spirit amen all right so this morning it's going to be a real short uh short message and short uh little service because again i i've mentioned to all of you before I, i'm not much of a singer so we're, we're not going to be singing here uh this morning um, but there are just a couple of things that I want to share with you before we do dive into uh, our scripture passage for today. Um, the first is that um, one of the things that uh, Katie and I had talked about uh, is how are we going to do worship uh, the coming weeks. And we, we designed a worship service. Uh, you can actually go on our website and see the bullets. And we had printed the bulletins out and everything. Um, and we, we wanted to do this thing called a moment of light. Um, and, and really what it was, was a, an intention to be able to highlight a few things uh, that were going on in the world so that we could give hope to people who, um, to give hope to people and to say, you know, while everything is crazy out there, there are still great things that are going on. Well, this week our intent was going to be to tell you about uh, a great ministry that we have done. Um, and it's been six months since we, we uh, sort of launched that and took collections for it. But each year we do, uh, during Christmas time, uh, Jesus is the Gift campaign. Uh, and what we do is we collect funds for this place called Epworth Children's Home down in Columbia, South Carolina, which is a, uh, a place where uh, they do a wonderful ministry down there. Well, a couple weeks ago, uh, I believe it was Steve Hill who, Steve Hill and his family uh, delivered the car that we purchased for them. We raised just over $8,000. Um, so we purchased a used car and we delivered it to them. And uh, the Reverend John Hollis, he actually recorded a video for us thanking us uh, for our generosity and thanking us for the partnership that we have with uh, Epworth Children's Home. Uh, and so we were going to show that today in person worship. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to post that a little bit later so all of you can see that uh, and we can celebrate together. Uh, and please also know this about Epworth Children's Home. A couple weeks ago, I think it may have been actually just about a week ago, 
Uh, we, um, they actually experienced a fire on their campus and a lot of their supplies uh, were destroyed during this, um, during this fire. And so uh, in the coming weeks, we're gonna try to organize a couple of things um, uh, to be sure to gather up some funds to finances and to resource them in order to help get them off, of, off the ground again. Um, because I know that you love Epworth Children's Home. I love it too. So we're going to be sending out announcements about that here in the coming weeks about how we can support them uh, and, and replenish some of their stocks on a few things. So, uh, so I wanted to share that moment of light with you. Please be on the lookout for the video uh, of Epworth thanking us. Uh, and so one of the things I want to do, um, and for you at home, you can do this as well. For those of you who know the uh, Apostles' Creed by heart, please feel free to join in. Um, but I want to share, reaffirm our faith this morning uh, in the midst of a crazy world, in the midst of uh, uncertainty. Uh, I want to invite you to reaffirm your faith in the, using the Apostles' Creed, the bedrock of our faith, the thing that reminds us of what the essentials, essential pieces of our faith are. And so... If you're at home watching with me uh, and you know it by heart, please feel free to join in as I read the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the, at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. And so with that, I, I, I want to steer us toward uh, our, our word this morning and uh, just want you to know that today we're, we're starting a new sermon series. Uh, we, we've gone through a couple sermon series since uh, we've been unable to gather in the building. Uh, the last sermon series we did was Rethinking the Church. Uh, if you haven't, uh, if you weren't able to watch all of those or you weren't able to uh, listen to all of those sermons, all of those sermons are still available here on Facebook and also on our YouTube channel. And we do have a sermon podcast to where it's just the sermons that you can go and listen to and, and catch up with all of that. So, but today, we're starting a new sermon series, and that sermon series is called Psalms. Now, the Psalms are one of the largest book, if not the largest book in all the Bible. There's 150 Psalms in the Bible, and essentially what the Psalms are is they are 150 songs uh, that range anywhere from a, a lament to celebration, from praise uh, to sorrow to confession to celebration and acknowledging God's presence. And so the Psalms are a massive book in the middle of the Bible, uh, and I've heard them described in a couple of ways. The first that I've heard them described as is their prayers. Um, and we can use these psalms as a way to be praying and in and, and times where we don't feel like we can pray, we can use these psalms uh, in order to give us uh, kind of guardrails or kind of give us a way to pray even when we do not feel like we are able to pray at this point. Um, so I've heard that they've been called uh, psalms or, or excuse me, prayers. I've also heard them described as the hymns or the songs of Jesus. Uh, Tim Keller, who as a Presbyterian pastor, I believe he's now retired, he wrote a 365-day devotional on working through the Psalms. One of my heroes, uh, the late Eugene Peterson, wrote an, also another book, a, a Year Through the Psalms. Um, but each of them would describe it as, we need to spend time in the Psalms to learn to pray and to learn in another way how to be authentic with God. Because here's the thing, regardless of all of the things that are in the Psalms, they teach us how to relate with God when things are good, but also when things are bad. And sometimes when things are bad, we sometimes have this tendency to hold things back or hold things close to us. But also in sometimes when things are good, we forget to give God's praise. And so these Psalms, I, what I want to encourage you to do as we go through these Psalms uh, for the next several weeks is to meditate on them, to take them slowly. Because here's the thing, they are all poetry. Now, when I was in school, in high school, middle school, I could not stand poetry. I couldn't stand it mainly because I don't think I had the patience for it. Uh, and there was often times it seemed to be like there was hidden meaning behind things that I, I would never get because I didn't care enough to look into. 
Well, for us today, for us, is that um, for us to really get a lot out of the Psalms, we have to be patient with them. And we have to take them as, as they are. And so for us today, we're starting with Psalm 1 from the very beginning because Psalm 1 lays all of that out. And so uh, if you have your Bibles with you at home, I, I would love for you to uh, turn to Psalm 1. Uh, it's a very short psalm. It's a very, uh, it's a very powerful psalm. Uh, and so it, it leads off the entire book of Psalm. And so uh, here is Psalm 1 from the NRSV translation. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither, and in all that they do they prosper. The wicked, the wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Uh, probably about a couple months ago, um, Greenville, South Carolina had these really bad tornadoes and Rachel and I were actually in, in, uh, in the path of one of those tornadoes. And uh, to keep the story a little short, we, we had the tornado roll through and afterwards we had all of these trees that had fallen in our yard. Well, uh, thankfully we've gotten most of those cleaned up, but a, a couple of weeks after that, it was just a slightly windy day, a pretty nice day, but there was a little bit of wind. And then Rachel and I were getting into my car. We were about to get out of the driveway back out. Then all of a sudden, there was another tree that fell. And again, this is right after uh, all of these tornadoes had happened, but it was long enough that we thought that we were kind of in the clear. Well, this tree fell and it didn't hit our house, uh, but instead it started leaning up against one of the other trees that, was, that belonged to our next door neighbors. Um, and so we were fortunate, but my, our two cars were underneath that tree. And so guess who had to go under the tree and to back those out? It was, it was me. Um, but to, but it was a very dangerous situation. And I actually sent a couple of pictures to some of our leaders in our church, um, and, and to let them know what had happened. And I think we were going to have Bible study that night, but with all of that, I decided to cancel it. Well, I sent the picture of the roots to one of my church leaders, uh, and he basically took a look at it and said, well, the roots look a little compromised. The roots look like they started to rot and um and he said that it was because of where they were that the roots weren't able to grow and to mature and to really continue to get nutrients uh out of the soil and that's true for all of us too is that all of us have these roots that we place in our lives uh and it's important for us to know where we spend a lot of our time because oftentimes where we spend our time is where we put our roots down and many a times uh, we waste a lot of time. We waste a lot of uh, time and energy watching the news or time and energy uh, being on Facebook or time and energy watching YouTube videos and doing all of that. And that's where our roots are coming in. And that's where our roots are diving deep into soil. But unfortunately, those places aren't always the most uh, uh, nutrient places. They're not the most nurturing places and they don't help us to mature. Well, in our text today, in our psalm, we're given a picture of two different kinds of people. We're given the picture of those who are happy, those who are blessed, or the righteous. And we're given the picture of those who are the wicked, those who are sinners, or those who are scoffers. And essentially, Psalm 1 is laying this out for us from the very beginning. But as we're starting our journey into the psalms, is to say, you have two choices. You can put your roots somewhere else, or you can put your roots in God. And with beautiful imagery, Psalm 1 describes what it looks like for somebody to put their roots in God and to delight in the law of the Lord, to love God and to love neighbor, and what it looks like for them to meditate on that law day and night and to live that out. The psalmist describes them as trees that are planted by streams of water. And when I hear that, it's, it's those trees that are planted by these streams of water that dig their roots deep into the ground and they can find that nu nutrients, they can find all that they need to live and to remain strong. And then he also says that they yield fruit in their season. 
and that their leaves don't wither, that these trees can remain strong in re regardless of the situations that are around us. And so the psalmist gives us this clear picture of this is what it looks like for those who love God, who love neighbor, and love God's laws. And so he reminds us of all of that, but also the psalmist reminds us of what it looks like to not do that. He says that the path of the wicked leads to perishing. And what he also says is that those who are wicked, they are like dust. They are, they are chaff, dust. They are wasteful. They're waste products that will just be driven away by the wind. And so the psalmist lays out two different, uh, two different paths for us to take. We can either take the path of the righteous. We can take the path that God is calling us to. Or we can take the path that, well, leads to more destruction and leads to a place where all we become is like dust. We have nothing to offer. We have no life to offer. And in our world today, the truth is, is that we need people who are uh, deep in God's word. The truth is, is that we see a world right now that is hungry, that is hungry for God's love, that is hungry for God's truth, and that is hungry for the fruit that comes from someone who dwells in God's word. All too often, it, it, it's easy from us, for us from time to time to just simply read a little bit uh, of scripture here and there and then go about our day. But here the psalmist is calling us to do more than that. That the psalmist is calling us to put our roots deep down into the psalms. To dig deep into the psalms and to draw nutrients from God. But the challenge for many of us is, is not just simply putting our roots into scripture. But we have to be uprooted from those other things that we love. That we have to be uprooted from drawing our nutrients from other sources other than God. I was mentioning to somebody that I was, I was talking about uh, Psalm 1 this weekend, and, and I mentioned to them that for me what it looks like is that, if you, for me what it looks like to dwell in God and to put your roots deep down into God, God's Word, it looks something like this, is that if you spend more time watching YouTube videos than you do meditating on God's Word, then it's the YouTube videos that are doing more of the feeding than God's Word. Now, for me, that's, that's where I'm at. I watch a lot of YouTube videos. I watch a lot of videos on Facebook. For, but for maybe some of you, it may mean the more time, or if you spend more time watching the news or spending time on social media or spend more time gossiping about something or, or, or just not doing anything at all, that's what's feeding you more than what God's Word is doing. And so I, I have a challenge for you. Uh, for the next 75 days, I want you to read two psalms a day. There's 150 psalms, so read one in the morning and then one in the evening. And don't just simply read it to read it to get through it, but really try to dig deep into the Word. In fact, in some ways, uh, it, it may mean to memorize some of these some of these psalms. So, for example, I'm going to memorize Psalm one. Uh, because it is a good reminder of the two paths that we have to choose from. And so, uh, so I want you to read a psalm in the morning and a psalm in the evening and do that for the next 75 days or however long that takes you to do. Um, a in a couple of days, there will be a guide on the website, um, on the new website to uh, show you where you should be at and on day one and day two and et cetera, et cetera. But I want you to really dig deep into this. Because all too often what we see is that our world is hungry for the fruit of God, but instead what we offer to the world is just dust. It's just chaff. It's just sentimentality. And right now what the world needs is the fruit that only the God can give, the fruits of the Spirit that only God can allow. And for us to continue to remain uh, as people who are not just concerned with loving God, but also to love our neighbor and to love our communities. It means to dig deep and to be willing to love and to be willing to rise above the hate that exists in our world. 
one of the things that uh, I was able to do this past week was to talk to one of our resident farmers, um, Bud DeYoung. Many of you know him. Um, and, and I found out this week that he, he grew peach trees. I, I had no idea about that, but uh, I, I gave him a call and I was able to talk to him a little bit and actually to visit with, with him safely, uh, social distancing uh, wise and wearing masks. We were able to visit safely together. Um, and I asked him, Bud, I am, I am out of my element here. I, I don't know anything about trees. I don't know what it means to be a farmer. Uh, and so I asked him, what was it like to grow peach trees? And he said that it was a lot of work. And that often they had to they had to bring the water in because the the trees required so much water and they took so much time and and this was one of those things that really stood out to me was this is that I asked how long did it take for those from when you planted the peach trees how long would it take for them to bear start to bear fruit and he said that it would take about two to three years to bear fruit it takes time for us to bear fruit. It takes time for us to dig deep into God's word and to begin to mature and to grow. It takes time for us to learn and to unlearn some things that are very painful and are very hurtful for others. It takes time to become a mature Christian. It takes time to be able to move beyond offering dust and offering chaff, but to offer fruit for those who are around us. So today, Psalm 1 is giving you an option. You can be rooted in something other than God, or you can be rooted in God and in God's Word. And so my prayer for you is that you, that you will be rooted in God, and in Jesus Christ, and in His Word. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. So before we get out of here, I, I do want to pray for us uh, one last time. Uh, and I, I want to share with you a, a little bit of my heart. So this week has been a hard week. These last, actually, honestly, these last couple of weeks have been very difficult weeks. Um, this week has been difficult because we all were looking forward to worshiping together. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, it, the time was just not right. So number one, I want to ask you to be praying for, uh, for those who are affected by the coronavirus, to be praying for the churches that are meeting right now uh, in person, for, to be praying for the doctors and the nurses and for the researchers to develop a vaccine. Um, because the sooner we get a vaccine, the safer that we will be able to uh, gather together safely uh, and at peace. But the other thing that I wanted to address uh, or were the events of last week when I was out on vacation. Um, it, was, it was a hard week for our nation. And it was a hard week for our brothers and sisters who are, are people of color. Um, point blank, racism is wrong. Corrupted power is wrong. And we as United Methodists have committed ourselves to fight against all powers and principalities that exist within this world and however they show themselves because we believe that God has God's kingdom is drawing close and that we believe that God has empowered us to uh, empowered us to bring that kingdom a little bit closer and so in the events that have followed I've continued to see more and more hate and more and more division continue to rise and rise and so I just want to ask you to do uh, one simple thing is that instead of posting something on Facebook, instead of having a knee-jerk reaction and maybe getting a little defensive, uh, and please hear me, there have been moments where I felt myself getting defensive as well. But what I want to ask you to do is to listen. And maybe even to put this whole thing into practice that I've been talking about. Instead of responding immediately to a post that maybe makes you defensive or angry, to instead go to God's Word to go to a psalm, to recite that psalm that you memorize. Because the truth is, is that we, we have a lot of work to do. We have, we, we have seen hate over and over and over again this week. We have seen division happening again and again. 
And unfortunately, we have seen racism crop up once again. And to see that it will divide God's people. God desires for his church to be a multi-ethnic, multi-racial church. And by his grace, I believe that he is drawing us closer to that. But we have to be open to God and open to his movements to fully embrace that. And so I know that is a hard word maybe to hear for some. And I know maybe some of you are already tired of talking about it. But I want to invite you to pray with me at this point because our world is in desperate need of it. So let's pray. Gracious God, God of all the nations, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, we ask that you will hear our prayer this day. For Lord, we live in a world that is filled with hurt, with hate, and pain. We, feel we live in a world that is filled with sin, and the powers of darkness sometimes seem to win. But Lord, this day we ask that you will draw us close to your word, that you will help us to be a hopeful people, that you will help us to be people that dwell in your word, that we become like trees planted by streams of water, that yield your fruit in your season, and that our leaves will never wither. Lord, I pray that you will anoint your church, to send your Holy Spirit upon Sharon United Methodist Church, but all churches everywhere. To be willing and eager to listen to you and to listen to our brothers and sisters of color who have been hurt this past week. Lord, teach us first to love. Lord, teach us how to listen. And Lord, teach us how to ask for forgiveness. Lord, we pray that it will be your church that anoints, that, that, that brings about your kingdom. And that one day we will see the end of racism, that we will see the end of hatred, that we will see the end of of dehumanizing one another. And so, Lord, this day we ask that you will send your Holy Spirit upon us this day. And Lord, we, we pray this prayer wherever we are, using the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now before uh, I end this video, I want to share with you just a couple of announcements. Uh, the first is that in the next couple of weeks, I will be uh, calling uh, and emailing and mailing um, or just trying to get in contact with all of our members and guests um, just to check in with you. Uh, I miss you. I, I love you. And I want to just know how you're doing and uh, maybe some of the struggles that you've had over the last uh, couple of months. So please know that I will be calling uh, and checking in with some of you. Um, and also just a, a note is that I know many of you love the hymns and love the Love seeing Kelly and Amy and uh, and Gray and Katie and all of them. Uh, next week, we're going to be back to recording again. So we're going to have a, a normal service, and, and the recording will come out on Sunday mornings, both on Facebook and on YouTube. Um, and this is, again, right now, we just have to be flexible um, during this time. I, I'm so thankful that you have been flexible and thankful for how y'all have been able to adjust and be able to still engage with us. Uh, and so please be sure to keep uh, us in your prayers and we will keep you in our prayers as well. Uh, and in the meantime, I, I wish that I hope that you have a good week. Uh, and if there's anything that you need, please be sure to contact me. Uh, and so God bless.